Hi, uh, welcome to Jewish Culture and Jewish Awareness. My name is Dustin Hausner. I'm the Jewish Outreach and Program Director at the Wayne YMCA. Our Jewish programs is funded through the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey. So today um, I have a wonderful guest. Um, for anyone who knows me, I'm a very big history buff. So we actually just had a history episode lately. We've done a couple about different types of Jewish history. So this one is a very interesting one because it has to do with local history, which is something I certainly could learn more about. So I'm really grateful uh, for today's special guest. Uh, today's guest is uh, Richard E. Poulton, who's the former president of the Jewish Historical Society of North Jersey. So Richard, it's wonderful to have you here today. Thanks very much, Dustin. It's great to be here, um, uh, especially to be uh, at a program that's affiliated with the Y. Uh, I have a long personal history with the Y going back uh, to my, my youth. Uh, and if it was misspent, it was misspent at the Y, uh, beginning in Patterson and in uh, the, the 50s and 60s, uh, and then uh, saw the new, the new building go up. So that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about today. Um, I, as, as I mentioned, I am a Patterson native, grew up on the east side, my family has uh, was in Patterson in the area uh, beginning in the eight, 1890s. Uh, so two of my grandparents were, were Patterson people, part of the Jewish community there. Uh, both of my parents were born in Patterson. Uh, my other two grandparents incidentally were immigrants, but spent most of their lives in Patterson as well. Um, and so uh, I have a, a, a long connection and a great affection for the city of Patterson and the entire area. I find it to be uh, one of the most fascinating places. It has an enormously rich history and a complicated history. And um, uh, as you'll hear later in the talk, uh, my love for Patterson and its history has kept me busy and, and off the streets, or actually maybe even sometimes on the streets, but uh, researching uh, the, the story of the city. And I, I've uncovered a number of uh, fascinating stories, uh, one of which we're going to focus on a bit more today, uh, which is the relationship of Patterson's leading architect, mm -hmm. uh, whose name was Fred Wesley Wentworth, uh, with the city's Jewish community. Interesting. And I, I venture to guess that uh, of the audience here today, if anybody, uh, they're gonna, you're going to find that many of your uh, milestone events in your life, mm -hmm. uh, if you grew up in the, in the North Jersey area, and, and particularly if you're Jewish, uh, took place in, in buildings that were designed by an architect you probably never heard of until today, Fred Wesley Wentworth. And so um, uh, I think that uh, I, I think that maybe it's best that we start the, the presentation now and see if we can get the technology going. Sure. Um, All I was gonna say was um, it's always great when I have a guest who's prepared and not only are you prepared, you literally have a wonderful slideshow presentation for us. Well, so certainly well, hope, hopefully you'll find it's wonderful after we're done. Uh, but, and, and it's an abbreviated program, uh, an abbreviated slideshow, because we have a limited amount of time. And I focused on, on, um, on some, some buildings that are, are sure to be well known. And I, I also want to point out that, as Dustin mentioned in the beginning of the, of the talk, I, I'm here as a representative of the Jewish Historical Society of Northern New Jersey, uh, which is the Patterson Passaic Clifton, started as the Patterson Passaic. Clifton area and it now encompasses Bergen County and Hudson County. And uh, this is an organization that actually has its roots in the Y uh, uh, because it was part of a, a history program that began back 40 years ago uh, as a, as by volunteers at the Y. So let me start the program yes. and we'll, we'll take it from there. Is, is that coming up everybody? Can, uh, you, can you see yeah. that Dustin? Yep, I can okay. see um, So this is an introduction, especially to the Jewish Historical Society of Northern New Jersey. Uh, there's our logo, and, and as the banner puts out, we are dedicated to preserving the heritage of Jewish life in, in Passaic, Bergen, and Hudson counties. Um, uh, here we go. Our mission is to collect, preserve, and make available 
the documentary heritage of Jewish life and culture. And that just, that goes beyond uh, synagogues uh, and specifically religious organizations, but to cultural organizations, uh, recreational, fraternal, uh, all kinds of organizations that, that, that dominated. And uh, as, as I mentioned previously, it started in 1979 as an oral history project uh, for, by volunteers at the Y in, in Wayne. This was just shortly after the Y had moved to Wayne. And we have in our files uh, uh, several, several dozen, maybe even a hundred uh, histories that were recorded back then, 40 years ago, of people who were prominent in the, re in the area. In some cases, not so prominent, just your ordinary people sharing facts about their life. And it took on uh, an effort of collecting and preserving uh, hist historical records of Jewish communities in northern New Jersey. Uh, we've, the, the group was formally organized as the Jewish Historical Society of Northern New Jersey in 1982. And uh, about five years ago, uh, we, have, we, we purchased a, a condominium space in Fairlawn and operate uh, out of a, a really terrific facility that has room for storage and meetings and occasional lectures and our archivist and things like that. Uh, we're an active, vibrant group. We welcome you to, to, to participate, anybody listening. Um, and uh, I hope you'll come and visit us, particularly when the pandemic is over. But keep in touch with, with us um, on, on, uh, on uh, our, our website. And one of the things that we do that is, is a real um, beloved service is we have something called Photo Friday which every, every Friday sends out pictures of historic events from our community to uh, hundreds of people who are on our membership list and our mailing list and give them some connection back to uh, what the community was like way back when mm -hmm. and keep maintain a connection between the present and the past. And if any of our listeners are members of organizations uh, or groups that that have records that they that they want to make sure are preserved and shared, and be there for for their kids and grandkids. Uh, please consider donating them to uh, our organization, uh, where if uh, we if we look them over and find that they're worth preserving, uh, worthy of of, of make, maintaining, uh, we will keep them in our archives and make sure that they're well taken care of. And if they're not for us, we'll give them back to you. We're not going to toss them away. So it's a it's a good idea to to um, if you if you are part of of a group that um, or a family that has great family records, uh, stories of your parents or grandparents, uh, not necessarily the trip to Arizona, but more significant documents like. Um, um, their immigration documents, or if they were members of, a, of an organization, if you have any records or membership cards or pins, or if they were in a union perhaps, or, or members of the Y and you have uh, the, 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 whatever it is, their, their ping pong club membership or trophy and don't know where, where to put it, we are the, the, a good place for you to to, to donate it and we'll make sure that it's well preserved. So that, that's that. And, and as I said, we, we celebrate the comprehensive nature of the Jewish community and its life, both synagogues and community centers or lodges and fraternal groups, uh, women's groups of all kinds, youth groups, anything that, 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 you, that um, brings light on the nature and lessons of Jewish life or things that we want to collect and maintain and preserve. Um, and so, um, and then we share that in sponsored talks and lectures and, and events that, that uh, have, have a, um, uh, a, a broad appeal and bring people out uh, to, 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 to share that. Um, and our, we have uh, saved the date, which we're asking people to, uh, to mark down on the calendar. 
Um, we are having a virtual gala or welcome home event uh, for Bruce Valanche, uh, who is uh, a contemporary, uh, uh, who grew up in our community, uh, moved on to, to fame and fortune in Hollywood, uh, and uh, is going to be the, uh, the, the focus of our, of our uh, gala or a virtual gala or virtual welcome home uh, on November 15th. It's, it will be available online. Uh, admission is, is going to be free. Anyone can, can, um, can log on. Mm -hmm. we, of course, we need sponsorship. Yeah. And we, we're, this is our big fundraiser for the year. So we're hoping that, that people will, will uh, support the event and contribute. Uh, it, it is guaranteed to be a lot of fun. Uh, Bruce is one of the premier comedy writers uh, of his generation and performers. And if you're an old fan of uh, Hollywood Squares, uh, he was on that show for many, many years. And uh, we think it's going to be a, a tremendous night, a lot of fun. He's, he is hilarious and has a lot of affection for, the, for, for our community. Uh, I was very active actually in at, uh, at Temple Emanuel and USY, and I'm sure spent many days and and, and many times at the uh, at, at the at the at your at the Y that when it was down on Van Houten Street in Patterson. Let me uh, just quickly ask um, because you said it's a free event, but it is your annual fundraiser. Um, right. If one wanted to find out about the different like sponsorship levels and things like that, what, what would be the best way of finding that out? The best way to do this is to contact the JHS uh, at, our, at, our, um, at our office, uh, either by email or by phone, or um, uh, uh, make sure that, and I, I, wanna, I, I think that just Google Jewish Historical Society of North Jersey, and um, the website will come up, and then uh, uh, we will be uh, we will be having more announcements. And in fact, probably by uh, we we can provide more information for your for the introduction when this is uh, when when this is placed online because we'll have more specific information available. Excellent. So great. Um, yep. Um, so please uh, continue. I just wanted to know for anyone. That's because you said with fundraiser, you know, how they could uh, learn more. Right. Um, let me, let me uh, talk a little bit about how I got involved in the JHS uh, of Northern New Jersey. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a bit of a Patterson history nut and a Patterson history buff. And one, one night in 1996, uh, it was a cold winter night and I was bored to tears. And I, I got on eBay as I did frequently in those days until I had so much stuff, my wife forbade me to get on any longer. But I, I was Googling for information about Patterson, New Jersey, and information came up uh, about a book called uh, The Recent Work of Fred Wesley Wentworth, Architect, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, I'm, I'm from Patterson. I studied architecture. Uh, I, um, I, I love the, the, the architecture of Patterson, found it intriguing, but had never heard of Fred Wesley Wentworth. And I bid on the book and didn't get it. I, I lost. But it set me on a quest over the, the next few years of finding out as much as I could about Fred Wesley Wentworth. Um, and it turned out that Wentworth, whose photo is there, was born in 1864 in Dover, New Hampshire he was the, the part of a distinguished New Hampshire family that goes back to 1636 uh, and trade and then and and goes and has a distinguished history in, in England that goes even back further. Uh, uh, he, he graduated Dartmouth in in uh, 1889 and of all places to settle comes to Patterson to practice architecture. And um, uh, was uh, be, for the first 15 years of his career, he picked a great place to be and a great time to be there because Patterson was um, 
was a boom town. It was growing in population. The mills were in full swing. Uh, people were making lots of money uh, and, and needed, needed uh, mansions and, and wonderful homes. Uh, Wentworth designed many of the, the distinguished public buildings in Patterson uh, and was the go-to architect for the city, especially when there was a major fire in 1902. He was really responsible for rebuilding the city. But the Jewish community in Patterson was also growing at that time. Um, by beginning in the 1890s through 1910, uh, there was an enormous growth of, of, of the Jewish community in Patterson. And a, 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 an event took place in 1913 that I think rattled the entire city. And that, that was a, a labor strike that took place in Patterson. Um, in 1913, when the silk mill workers, 25,000 of them, went on strike, many of whom were, were Jews. Um, and um, the, 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 the entire city really was, was faced uh, a, a very uncertain future and w w w was, was the source of a lot of concern. Um, and here is a picture of a labor rally in Halden that took place at the Botto House, which is now a museum. It's hard to imagine how, how the strike uh, uh, impacted the city of Patterson, but it stood things on their heads. It's interesting because just very quickly, like I knew about the labor strikes. There's actually quite a few um, different documentaries and things about it, but I had no idea it was in uh, Patterson as well. So that's like- Oh yeah, big, big strike. And, and there was also a conflict uh, a perceived conflict that um, that that uh, a lot of people felt that there, that the immigrants did not understand the workings of, of of the way things worked in America and had not become Americanized. Here's that, there's an expression that sounds vaguely familiar in our times today, but in in, in this era, it was the Jewish community, or vast portions of it, particularly. Um, uh, the, the portions of the community that came from Eastern Europe that weren't speaking English uh, or speaking English badly, hadn't learned American ways and were not Americanized. And it was a problem that the, the Jewish community itself recognized as, a, as an issue. And they began developing, uh, the leadership of the Jewish community began developing institutions that would uh, facilitate Americanization of the Jewish population in the area. Um, the first of those, here, here's, the, here's the, the expression, not Americanized, a, a general widely shared conclusion about the 1913 silk strike and the Patterson population needed reform. They simply were not Americanized. Um, but by 1913, you can see in this news article, uh, Hebrew, Hebrews were making great strides. A lot of businesses were Jewish owned. Uh, there was a mayor in the city, Nathan Barnard, by that point who had served many years and was a, a leading citizen, was very successful. Um, one of, one, uh, a member of the Jewish community, Jacob Fabian, started building movie theaters, which were uh, ultimately a very Americanizing uh, way to get uh, people to become American. The first of those opened in 1914. And and um, money was uh, money was being made and 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 there was also concern by those who had been successful that the vast the, the larger Jewish population in particular the community uh, needed needed basic services and social support and began developing institutions and when they did that who did they turn to as their architect. Uh, but Fred Wesley Wentworth. Uh, Wentworth designed the first of Fabian's movie theaters. He also lived on the east side of Patterson, not far from where Jacob Fabian lived. The two knew each other, and Fabian and other leaders of the Patterson community turned to, to Wentworth to design the institutions of Jewish life in Patterson. And I'm going to focus for a few minutes on, on those. The first of, is, is the Bar Barnard Hospital. Um, 
the most significant building in, of the Jewish community. And here is, here is the, uh, the newspaper article when the cornerstone for that building was, was laid. And here's a banquet that was held by the Jewish community, the leaders of the Jewish community who were so supportive of the Barnard Hospital. This was held at the Hebrew Free School uh, that was then on Broadway near Straight Street in Patterson. And the following, and, and, in, and this is where I, this photograph is part of my connection with the Jewish Historical Society and how I became involved. Because I was looking for information about the connection between Wentworth and the Patterson Jewish community. Okay. Went to the Jewish Historical Society uh, back in, in 2008 or something like that. Uh, Jerry Nathans, who was our leader and curator and chief cook and bottle washer, went back into another room and found a picture of this of this uh, of this banquet. Mm -hmm. And here in this image, you can see um, Nathan Barnard at the head of the table, a mm. uh, leader. And then uh, uh, three to his right is, is Jacob Fabian. And then the, 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 the man with the distinguished mustache yeah. at the bottom center of the, of the uh, uh, photograph is Fred Wesley Wentworth. Mm. So this shows the, the personal connection and also shows how, how Jewish, the Jewish leadership of, of the community operated in those days. This was a royal feast of a, of, a, of, a, of a Jewish nature. There was a black tie affair that was led by Masons. Uh, the, the groundbreaking had a rabbi and the Masonic Lodge uh, invoking a, 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 a whole ceremony. And it gave some real insight into what the Jewish community was like at that time, the leadership of the Jewish community. And, and so it was, this was very helpful. And, and to me in, in getting that getting that picture of what Jewish life was like in Patterson during that period. And here, of course, is, is a building of the, uh, of the Barnard Hospital when it was completed. It was a very handsome building. It was, uh, it was uh, a centerpiece of, of healthcare designed and, op and operated to assist the immigrant population. That was its purpose and focus. Uh, that was invoked at the at the groundbreaking and and carried on and uh, everyone in in of a, of with a Jewish background in in your market area knows about the Patterson uh, Barnard Hospital and probably was either born there or had a connection to it of one kind or another. Well, that's that's one institution and here's another photograph of it. It was really a rather handsome building. It was demolished in the 60s. This portion of the building was demolished in the 60s and replaced with a modern building. But, but I was born there and I'm sure many of your, many of the people who are hearing this were born there as well. Here's another building that, that grew up in Patterson during this time. And uh, this was on Broadway and Carroll Street. Um, and this is the first YMHA that served the city of Patterson. This was they, they purchased an, an older structure uh, probably around uh, uh, in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And it, they, uh, the Jewish community provided um, uh, recreational services, Americanization programs, uh, English as a, as, a, as a second language programs, uh, teaching about cleanliness and citizenship and providing kids with recreation. And it very quickly, um, outgrew the premises and, and needed replacement. And the, the Jewish community again found a, a, build, a site in downtown Patterson and built a new building. And who did they hire as their architect? But none other than Fred Wesley Wentworth, of course. And that's this building that you see here. And in, and in this building that's uh, taken when the, when the building first opened, you can see to the right of the building, the, just a skinny little sliver of a building. That was the original Temple Emanuel in Patterson okay. before it moved to the east side to to Park to uh, Broadway and um, and Thirty Third Street. Uh, but 
Th this building uh, offered a gymnasium, a pool, uh, a ballroom, uh, meeting rooms, classrooms, uh, and really expanded the entire array of social services uh, that, that, uh, that were so important in, in shaping a generation of immigrants and their children and uh, was, uh, was really the centerpiece of, 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 of Jewish social life during this entire period. It was not a particularly, uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily there for religious services, although there were services at the high holidays and things like that by independent groups, but it was, it, it, it provided the, the full array of, uh, of, of services that, uh, that WISE came to provide. And, and it was a response to the fact that, that uh, especially children needed a place to go uh, that would provide a, uh, a wholesome environment where kids could learn to swim and, and do, go to camps and things like that. And it, was a, it was a huge success for many, many years. And, and I, I uh, would go to after school programs here. I learned to swim here. I took my junior life saving course in, in the, the pool down in the basement uh, and played uh, uh, basketball. I admit I was terrible, but there were all kinds of events going on. It was, it was a really lively, great place. Uh, here's the interior for those who remembered. It had, uh, it was, it had a lovely multi-purpose auditorium and a great lobby with a Jewish star. When you entered the building, there was a snack bar, people behind the desk, uh, keeping an eye on things, making sure that kids didn't misbehave too badly and that the businessmen who came there to play handball and eat at the snack bar all were, were well taken care of. It was a great place. Yeah, it looked wonderful. And this is what it looks like today. It's been converted into a school. Mm. Um, and then fi the final building I'm going to show uh, is is the the greatest building of, Patter of the Patterson Jewish community in terms of its architectural significance. Uh, this is the uh, building that Temple Emanuel built in in 1929, again designed by Fred Wesley Wentworth with with support from Jacob Fabian, and it has the influences of a movie theater uh, entrepreneur. It was a very you would walk in and and uh, it was a large open space. Uh, it had spectacular windows. This is what the building looked like from the exterior up until recently. Very elaborate doors and and uh, sort of an Art Deco. This was a style that that uh, uh, was frequently used of this oct uh, octagonal structure. Is it octagonal or but a six-sided structure that that. Uh, uh, was, was very popular during that era. And this is what the interior looked like. Uh, you can see the, the lighting and the elaborate windows. And there was a magnificent window overhead. And for many years, this was the home of Temple Emanuel. And I, I would argue is one of the great synagogues in the country, let alone uh, uh, the state, and was a, a major architectural accomplishment. And, and, um, it was later expanded to include schools. Actually, I just was, no, I take that back. They were built with the building, schools and social halls, all part. It was really a, a center, of, again, of Jewish life uh, with, with a ballroom. You could have, there were uh, hundreds of weddings and bar mitzvahs and, and other events that took place in that building. It was really quite something. And here's what the building looked like coming in from the street. And, and that, uh, that, that finishes up my brief slideshow for today. Uh, and there are many other buildings for Patterson um, uh, and architectural fans that I could have highlighted. Uh, the, the Fabian Movie Theater Group had six, uh, Fabian commissioned Wentworth to design six of the grand movie palaces in New Jersey, including the Patterson Fabian and the, uh, the Stanley in Jersey City, which was probably their best building, still standing now operated by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, but uh, 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 
it, as you can tell, uh, the, the story really resonated with me. And as I got into it, I found out that my parents were both born in a hospital Wentworth design. My dad was born mitzvahed in the synagogue Wentworth design. They were married at the Alexander Hamilton Hotel in Patterson, which of course Wentworth design. Um, uh, I was born in the, uh, uh, the morning hospital and uh, they went on dates and movies that, and I went on dates and movies that in movie theaters that Wentworth design. So our, our lives were really um, uh, uh, intertwined with the buildings that, that he designed. And that's why I, I, call, I titled the book, uh, Fred Wesley Wentworth, the architect who shaped Patterson and its people because his buildings were really such an indispensable part of, of the, the story of Patterson. And it wasn't just the Jewish community that, that he, he designed the YMCA in, in downtown Patterson and the ones in Passaic. He had a, a really prolific career. And um, uh, my book is for sale at the Jewish Historical Society of Northern New Jersey, if anyone is interested. Um, and um, uh, I, I continue to be fascinated by, by uh, the, the, the Wentworth story, his connection to the Jewish community. He was, in fact, a, a pallbearer at Jacob Fabian's funeral. So they were more than just business associates. They were friends and had a mutual respect. Um, and I've always found that the story of these two, uh, this odd couple in particular, uh, uh, Wentworth, the ultimate uh, American white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, from one of the most distinguished families in, in, in New England, uh, the family where there's, you know, there are Wentworth Halls at, uh, at Dartmouth, Wentworth gave the, uh, a Wentworth gave Dartmouth the charter. And there's, there's, there's name, a Wentworth name is all over and over. With a, with a Jewish immigrant from, uh, uh, from uh, Eastern Europe uh, who made his way here and uh, became Wentworth's probably most significant patron, individual patron, brought, brought a lot of work to Wentworth and relied on Wentworth. Uh, for, for that. I love that story and the movie rights are available if anyone is out there who's interested. I think it'd make a great, a great picture. Uh, so uh, that's my connection. Uh, uh, I also would point out that uh, our organization does a, sponsors a variety of, of lectures and talks. We had a, a fascinating lecture on um, a U.S. Senator named Warren Barber, W. Warren Barber, whose family owned the Barber Mills in Patterson and has a Patterson connection, although he didn't grow up in Patterson and live there, who was a fierce advocate for uh, Jewish refugees um, uh, who, came, who, who were struggling during the 30s and 40s. And he fought to have uh, refugees admitted into the United States, um, uh, not as successfully as, as he had hoped, but was an accomplished guy. We, we, so we're, if, if for those out there who are interested in, in, in history, in Jewish history, in our regional history, whether you're Jewish or not, um, our, our group is someone you ought to keep in touch with and, and uh, uh, make sure you contact. Um, and um, uh, we are always working on uh, new activities, need more support, uh, always looking for, for uh, people who, who we have a, an active group of volunteers um, and uh, we need both, both the support of, of people who can, who can participate. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask for financial support, which we also need. The, COVID events have really shaken things up. We're working hard to recover from that, but like every other uh, nonprofit and local group, uh, we were hit very hard by COVID. So I think you did a wonderful job going over some of the overview of obviously the organization you're representing, some of the history and our 
wonderful neighbors, uh, Patterson, and some of the rich Jewish history um, with that, um, as well as you mentioned your upcoming a fundraiser event in November for those who are interested in sponsorship. Um, please go on their website or send an email to learn more about how you can do that. Um, as you mentioned, COVID-19 has certainly hurt um, a lot of places, a lot of organizations, a lot of people. So, um, you know, if people want to learn more, they can, of course, uh, contact you or go on the website, it sounds like. Um, I'm curious, because um, you mentioned the lectures, um, besides the fundraiser coming up, is there um, something coming up that uh, we should be on the lookout for? I know because of COVID-19, a lot of people who have lectures, museums, uh, things like that, it's all been fairly topsy-turvy. It, it, uh, unfortunately, that's the same story for us. We did have a regular lecture program and series. Uh, as of now, we're focused in the short term on, on this, or this fundraising event this, and, and, and community celebration. I want to make clear that everyone is welcome. Uh, it's going to be free and openly accessible and we guarantee, if nothing else, you'll have a few laughs and have a good time. Um, um, after that, we will focus back on our programming, but it's been so hard with the office shut down for several months uh, during the quarantine. And even now, we, we, we were there for limited times. Uh, but we will get back with, our, with, a, with an active program uh, schedule. But for now, it's let's get our house in order. Uh, let's, let's make sure we can get through this, and then we'll, we'll get back to doing what we do best. Richard, I want to thank you so much for you know taking the time to speak with us today. Um, obviously. Um, again, if anyone's interested in the historical, the Jewish Historical Society of Northern New Jersey, please go on their website. Um, please look up what they're doing. As I said, they're doing a fundraiser in November uh, 13th, if I remember correctly. 15th, November 15th. It's a sun, Sunday at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars, and uh, more information will be available on how to access the, the event and uh, how to, how to uh, participate. Fantastic. And also, if anyone's interested in your book that you were mentioning as well. That's right. Also available at the Jewish Historical Society. And, and um, it, uh, has, if, you're, if, if you are interested in Patterson history, architectural history, um, New Jersey history, I think you'll find it in the Fantastic. Well, Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. And for everyone out there watching, I just want to say I wish, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. And uh, we look forward to having you uh, watch another episode. Uh, Richard, thank you so much again for joining us today. Justin, my pleasure. Thank you for having me.